Hello and welcome back to Kirby SQL Talk. Today we're going to talk about a great new, very easy to use tool called Azure SQL Data Sync. What this tool does is it allows you to keep your on-premises database in sync with an Azure Cloud database. Uh, so in this diagram, you can see in the first situation you have your uh, hub database and uh, you'll use this tool to keep that in sync uh, with another database in the cloud. And in the diagram to the right, uh, you'll see that uh, the hub database, uh, let's just say it's in the cloud, it can keep an on-premises database in sync as well as another cloud database in sync. And then the sync DB over on the right, the, the green object, that's a metadata database that keeps track of, of all the synchronization. So this is a very nice, easy to use tool uh, that allows you to replicate your changes. So let's uh, look at the requirements to do this. Each table must have a primary key. Um, you can have a, an identity column in the co uh, table, that's no problem, but it needs to be the primary key. And then no special characters like period, left or right bracket in the name of the object. Uh, so let's jump in there to Azure and see how you set this up. Okay, so here we are in our Azure ARM portal. And I'm going to click on the database. Uh, this is a cloud database. This is using Azure SQL database. And it's going to open up the blade for the database. And then we have all the options down here. Now, what we're going to concentrate on is the sync to other databases option right here. You simply click on that. And this is where you start the configuration of your what we call a sync group. So I don't have any sync groups. I don't have any agents. Uh, agent is what you'll need to install on your on-premises uh, database server. So let's get started by clicking the uh, new sync group button up here. And then we'll give it a name. And I'll just call it Kirby's demo group. And automatic sync, yes. And the sync frequency, I think the most frequent we can do currently is every five minutes. So you're given the option here and we'll set it to that. And this is an important one to pay attention to conflict resolution, hub win, wins, uh, member wins. So in our situation, we're going to say the hub wins. This is the uh, database in the cloud. I want that one always to win any kind of conflict um, as opposed to a member. So we click that option and then click OK. Okay, that took about 30 seconds to uh, set up. I paused the video, but here we are, and it's asking us for a username and password for the contact manager database. That's the Azure database. That's gonna be the hub database. This one is gonna be essentially the primary and will override uh, the other databases if there's any conflicts. So um, let me type in my password. And now, uh, this is where we set up which databases to keep in sync. So you can add an Azure database through this option or an on-premises. So let's click the Azure one first. This one takes a little bit less uh, setup. Okay, so it prompts us for a sync member name. This is um, uh, going to be shown within the, uh, the, the sync group. So it just helps you identify uh, what this is called. So we're, we're just going to call this uh, Azure DB. And um, the SQL server I'm interested in is um, this one right here. And it has a database in there uh, with the same name. So this is the one that I want to keep in sync. So I click that and then sync direction. Uh, I want the direction to be. And we're given three options by directional sync. And that's where the conflict resolution would come into play. Or if you're simply doing to the hub, uh, then this would be where all the writes are happening and it would sync them to the hub or from the hub. So you have those different uh, options there. And let's just say bi-directional. And then here you're going to uh, need to uh, enter uh, another username and password. And this is to get access to this um, uh, member database that's part of the sync group. And then I'll click OK. Okay, that took roughly 30 seconds, and you can see at the top right that Azure uh, Database member has been added. We now have that listed under here too. So Azure Database, we have a member. Now let's add an on-premises database. So we'll click this one, and it's gonna give us um, 
three different steps that we need to uh, set up one so we don't have an existing agent this is a brand new setup so i'm clicking the radio button for create a new agent and it gives us three steps so the first step is to download and install the sync agent and i do have a 2016 um, instance here on my laptop so i'm going to pick to install this so if you install this there are a couple requirements that you need in order for this to run so let me show you what that those look like um, i've already installed those but it's going to direct you to this page it's uh, going to ask you to install a couple feature packs um, but instead of just clicking the install button click the install instructions there's two things you need to look for here and this is how you install them i have these in the video notes to make it easy to find but you're going to first search for clr and let's look for clr in a heading here we go microsoft system clr types for sql server 2012 don't worry about the version this works with 16. you're going to want the 32 bit install so let me just highlight that there you want that package right there not the 64 bit that will be upgraded at some point hopefully in the near future uh, so you need the clr types and then also after you install that look for manage meant objects there's a few of them in here including for analysis services so ignore that get down to this uh, section right here uh, use my little zoom it here to show you so you want the 32 pit x86 package here so that's just some guidance because uh, probably the first time you do this that's not really obvious install those two packages then uh, download this uh, agent um, data sync agent so i've already downloaded the agent here's the msi file let's go ahead and install that um, you'll agree to the terms if you don't have the those two required components it'll tell you on the next screen i have them so at this point i'm going to type in my id and password so this needs to be some account uh, that has um, access to your database actually more importantly it needs to have access to be able to uh, reach out to the microsoft uh, data sync uh, service so i'm going to type in my credentials here i've clicked the next button and finish the installation here so we'll give that a minute to run and then click close when it's finished Okay, so that's all installed. Now give the agent a name. So I'm just going to call this um, Kirby's local agent and then click create and generate a key. At this point, uh, just take a few seconds and then it's going to give us a key here. Okay, the key is generated. That took uh, uh, actually a little bit over a minute. So this is the final step in configuring our agent. Go ahead and copy this string here what we need to do with this is register it on the local agent that we just installed so just a few seconds ago we installed the agent let's go find that click your menu item here and if you just type in sync you should be able to find it so microsoft sql data sync you might want to pin that to your start menu but let's run that now you need to do two things so this is usable. First of all, submit the agent key that we just grabbed from our Azure portal. Submit that, uh, there it is there, and then the login credential. And let's test the connection. It says connection succeeded, so we're all good there. Now, the next step is to register. We have to register our local a database instance or whatever on-premises database you're going to use by clicking the register uh, excuse me register button so uh, let's do a, a windows login here and put in my instance name okay and let's test the connection and that succeeded so we'll save that so now your agent is all set it's it's connected with this uh, sync member up here with this uh, sync group and it's also connected with your local instance so we're done with this part okay now we come back to our blade here click ok because we're all done configuring the, uh, that uh, sync agent 
Now click the database that we want to sync. So we'll just give it a name here. Let's call it um, on from SQL. That can be any name. Now we're going to be uh, prompted with um, what to connect to. And the reason this comes up is because we just configured our sync agent uh, for this instance and this database name. And sync direction, let's say bidirectional. So click OK on that. And then click OK on that. OK, then we click OK. Now the final part is the tables. Click the tables here, and now you're going to select what you want to keep in sync. So our hub database, that's our, our one Azure database that we started with, it's only going to find the tables that have primary key. So if you don't see your table, it might be because it doesn't have a primary key. Uh, so I'm picking the contacts table. That's just uh, um, a table for the purposes of this demo. And you can also select the columns that you want to keep in sync. So that's the hub database. Then we pick, um, let's go ahead and save that. And now, I think we could have done this all in one shot, but now pick the Azure SQL database. This is the context table uh, that we want to keep in sync. Click save, and then this should get updated and say, um, you know, so far that we have two tables uh, in sync. And finally, our on-prem database contacts here. So it's the same table in all three. Click save. So what we've just done is we've said, yes, we want our one Azure SQL database, one table in that to synchronize to another Azure SQL database and to our on-prem SQL database. Let's give this a minute to refresh. And if we go back here and let's go back to this group, we should see an update to the tables. And I'm sorry, my mistake. It's uh, It's got one table selected because we're just synchronizing one table. So we're all set here. Okay, so to kind of just review what we have going on here, we have three databases. Uh, that's what's important here. And one table is being synchronized across all three databases. Um, if we go back to Azure, let's just start from the beginning here. Just as a review, we're going into our hub database. We're clicking sync to other databases. And we're brought back to this screen here. Uh, let's look at two things, our sync group, that's where all the action happens on our sync, sync agent. If you click the sync agent, this has already been installed. You can delete it. You can regenerate the key in case you need to uh, uh, re-register with your local agent. Um, and then let's go back here and our group. Once again, this is where our three databases are defined and what tables are being refreshed among those three databases. So here we can add another Azure SQL database, another on-prem database, um, but that is how you set it up. Pretty straightforward. Like I said, I'll have notes in the uh, video notes. Okay, let's summarize the steps that we did in this video. Uh, first of all, we went out to Azure, to our Azure SQL database, and then the menu item that we picked was sync to other databases. It opens up a blade and uh, starts the configuration process. So at that point, we set up a new, what's called a sync group. Uh, as part of that setup, we defined the frequency. We said every five minutes, uh, we want it to synchronize. And we also defined the conflict resolution, um, whether the hub was gonna win or, or the, the member databases were gonna win if there was a conflict. Um, then we added sync members. We did two things. We added another Azure SQL database. That was pretty straightforward. And then we added an on-premises instance on my local laptop in my situation. And as part of the on-premise uh, setup, we had to download and install an agent. So it prompted us to install that agent. There is some uh, requirements for that agent to run, and, and that is in the video notes at the end. Uh, once that was installed, we, we copied a key from the Azure portal, uh, which it prompted us uh, to do. And then uh, we registered that on our uh, uh, SQL agent, the little uh, sync agent, I'm sorry. 
It's actually called Submit Agent Key is the menu option uh, uh, that you do to copy that to your SQL agent software, uh, sync agent. And then we registered our local instance. So that little uh, agent that's running on our, our uh, on-premises server uh, needs to know what instance we want to keep in sync. So I just register it with a local instance I had. And then, of course, the last step is we defined the tables that should be kept in sync. So we've set up high level, you know, cloud database to cloud database uh, to on-premises database. And then we said which tables and which columns we wanted to keep in sync. So that's it. Um, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you next time.